When placing ground pads around the edge of the trench, ground pads should be run up to the lip of the trench and the initial pad that's placed should be set perpendicular to the trench so that the long side uh, runs in. That gives you an eight foot platform to walk up to the trench if necessary. It also should be placed right at the victim. That gives you a template for your first pair of panels that are going to be set. Ensure that on both sides, if possible, your ground pads are placed in likewise fashion. Your next panel sets or your next ground pad sets should be run parallel to the trench. This will give you a, a complete grid system to go ahead and lay out the framework with your bridging. If your spoil pile is encroaching upon the lip of the trench, make sure that you're working off of ground pads and do it with extreme caution. Use a trench boss or a shoring boss who's evaluating that interior wall to make sure that you're not going to have any faults or any sloughs as these guys progress. It's a good practice to use dimensional runners and then place ground pads on top of those runners and remove soil as needed to go ahead and create some load distributing points going across. If this is too high risk or high hazard, then the better option is to take your perpendicular bridging, slide it directly across the trench, and simply drive it into the spoil pile. Once it's driven into the spoil pile, then you have a built up uh, anchor point on the far side for that bridging element, and you can advance across your runners or your side bridges so the guys can work on an elevated platform. Egress points must be established within 25 foot spacing or ranges within a trench. Those egress points can include walkouts, digouts, ground ladders. If a walkout or, or exists in one open end of the trench, it's important to pull that measurement from the five foot depth. So if you have an extended ramp that extends down to a deep wall trench, uh, you cannot pull that measurement from the base of the trench. It has to be pulled from that walkout at the five foot margin uh, to establish that, that range uh, or that distance for the next placement of your egress point. Additionally, it's recommended to place egress points at the work zones. So once rescuers are placed into a panel set, it's important to have egress, uh, egress points immediately at the rescuers. As you develop your box cribs, over here for your bridging segments you need to take some time to identify how much height you want out of those systems some of it's going to be driven by what kind of material you're using for your bridging pot products so if you're using two bi-dimensional timbers uh, the parallel runners with the trench need to be at least a 12 footer um, and ideally longer so that you can extend beyond that initial 12 foot zone a 12 foot 2 by is going to sag significantly as you load the, the center portion of it. So you're going to double those up and then scab out another segment on top of it. Um, with that type of flexion in the boards, be cognizant of your height uh, that you build up with your cribbing bases. If you're using the corrugated steel or aluminum, you have a lot less flexion, so you can build a lot lower without having to worry about loading ground points around the lip of the trench. So take some time to think about the, the type of product you're using. Don't build up these base cribs higher than they need to be. You don't want precarious platforms for guys to be working on. So just build them up to an appropriate height that you're not creating a bunch of additional load points and create safe platforms for your workers around the lip of the trench. Also remember that you can extend those. You can make them as wide as are necessary. So if we had a large slough on this trench wall here, we could have a bridging system that's six foot wide if necessary to create a safe platform for guys to work on. So build these bases, um, commensurate with what the trench gives you, how it presents, and what your needs are personnel-wise based on your materials that you're utilizing. When you got a narrow run with your soil pile encroachment, if you build your box cribs right underneath that end to support your bridging, then in essence you're simply loading that very uh, uh, critical lip of the trench. It's much more advantageous to drive that slide into the spoil pile and then distribute that load to the spoil pile itself further back from the trench than you are loading a box crib right there at the lip of the trench. When framing out your trench, whether you're using corrugated aluminum or whether you're using dimensional timber, 
ensure that you've run your parallel segments with the trench up on top of the perpendicular segments to give yourselves effective safe zones for working for the bridging. Build them up appropriately so that you're not loading the lip of the trench and ensure that your load points are on ground pads to effectively distribute that load. If you walk your perpendicular bridging in and run it across the middle section of the parallel ground pads, that will enable you to set the lateral benchmarks for your 12 foot zone. You then place the 16 footers on top of those 12 foot runners uh, and slide those in parallel fashion on each wall of the trench. Your framing assembly should encompass approximately a 12 foot span. If you create a 12 foot grid, that enables you to do three panel sets uh, on each side, giving you three pairs or six full panels that are pressurized, giving you a 12 foot working zone. Once that initial uh, section in the middle is shored up, pressurized, and provides a safe haven for the victim and the working team. Additional cribbing can be placed under that middle span on the parallel bridging segments. It's important to not stabilize that initially uh, because you don't want to load or pinpoint load that position right at the lip of the trench. As your parallels come in, remember that it's imperative that the inside edge of the parallel line up with the bottom corner of the trench. Once they're in position, you can drive nails. If you're using corrugated aluminum, you can lash them or you can pre-drill holes for nails so that you interlock this template, creating this overall framework for straight, true um, panel sets so that your system is going to be within the engineering design and not fail if you have a slough or a load, a load intrusion. The last point to make out about our bridging with the buildup is ensuring that we do have a little bit of a cavity or a gap beneath the bottom of the bridging and the top lip of the trench. By utilizing that buildup, it not only helps distribute um, the load, ensuring that we're not additionally loading the wall of the trench, it also gives us access. So when we need to do our backfilling applications with dunnage, airbags, or soil, we can readily and easily pull back on that ground pad and drop in whatever product we need there to ensure we've got good contact behind our strike zones. Once your trench is effectively framed out, the next consideration uh, for having a systematic approach is utilizing slides. Slides can be anything from dimensional timber products to additional corrugated steel or aluminum. Advancing these, these slides down into the trench so that they marry up with opposing corners and then sliding your panels down and create protective zones for your victim so that the panels don't potentially impact the victim. They also help ensure that your panels marry up with those bottom corners so that we maintain that straight, clean, and neat placement for our panels. When utilizing slides, it's important to place slides towards the near side of the trench initially. You don't want to have to um, place the, the near side trench and then bring your far side placement over the top of the strong back that's extending up above the trench panel. Once that far side panel is, is dropped in and then we push the slides over, then the slides articulate so that the bottom of the slides come into the interior wall and then we place the panel and let it slide down to the inside wall. Really uh, fast and easy, effective ways to help take some of the load off the panels and ensure that the panels get placed well. Also make sure that you're using a good approach with your panel placements as far as personnel. Ideally you want to have three guys on each panel, one guy on each rope and one guy on the strong back. If you've ensured that the knots of your ropes um, are going to the inboard portion of the panel, then when the panel is placed to draw the bottom of the panel into the wall a little bit further, because all that has to take place is the two outside guys have to pull up on the ropes and the center point man on the strong back has to push out on the strong back. That draws that panel in, again, ensuring that we have good placement. Utilizing large dimensional timbers like the 4 bys are a little more challenging than 2 by 6s or 2 by 12s for your slide placements because they have a tendency to roll and not marry up as well on the bottom corners. But utilize what's at your disposal. Ensure that it's an appropriate length based on the depth of the trench so that your panels can easily get over top of it, um, but that you have enough extension above to, to safely and effectively capture them as the panels slide down the trench wall. Strong panel sets will have no gaps between panels. It will be a seamless event of 
on multiple panels that don't allow any soil to slip in between the cracks or gaps in the panels. Keeping the panels completely upright, utilizing the template, allows consistent lengths to be pre-measured and pre-built for your struts and also completes a stable base trench operation that allows workers to establish whaling systems and any other advanced applications that get added on with effectiveness and efficiency. When gaps exist behind the panel or the load zone, uh, to ensure that the panel stays straight, especially on the first panel set, it's recommended to utilize dunnage to backfill, cribbing and wedges, uh, so that you can secure that zone and effectively load your strut and your panel. Displacing the panel or angulating the panel uh, will prevent uh, complete coverage on the trench walls when the next panels are placed. So it's ideal to keep panels straight, clean and neat. If utilizing soil to backfill initially, typically the soil will careen around the edges of the panel and continue to fill in at the floor of the trench. So cribbing is the ideal option. Once rescuers enter the trench, it's imperative that they stay within the safe zone. So their working space is limited completely to the pressurized panel set. Uh, it should be strongly encouraged and the safety officers should be very diligent about, it, diligent about managing that personnel and ensuring that they're not reaching outside of that zone or working outside of that zone. Once the rescuers are in the zone, they should secure the base plates of the struts, ensuring that they have at least two nails on opposite corners placed through the base plates and either nailed over or uh, tweaked over so that the heads of the nails keep the base plate. While those two rescuers are working, slides should be placed and additional panels should be being dropped in.